In Manchester's Orthodox Jewish community, Jewish law is the ancient system of duties, obligations and laws that affects every aspect of Jewish life. There are times when you meet men and they put out their hands and say, pleased to meet you. Um, and it's difficult, it is difficult. You don't, you don't want to embarrass anybody. Um, so you try and explain to them, oh, you know, we don't shake men's hands. And there are rules for everything, including death. In the Shiva house, all, all mirrors are covered and the television is covered for the same reason that we shouldn't see reflections and mirrors and we don't use the television during the year, morning, there's no music. Time, time, time. But just when it can all seem too serious, there's the weird and wonderful festival of Purim. Purim is the only day of the year where it's a mitzvah to get drunk. Good morning. I have a child. It's 6.30 a.m. in Manchester, and Rabbi David Joffe is waking his children. Even the process of getting his children out of bed is governed by the edicts of Jewish law. When we wake up in the morning, uh, first of all, our hands might have touched areas in the night which are uh, spiritually unclean. Plus, when we wake up in the morning, uh, sleeping is, a, is like a mini death. And, and therefore, we become into, in a state of impurity. And the impurity leaves our body, uh, except for the end of, uh, like it's the residue at the end of our, uh, the, uh, the end, uh, our hands, on the end of our fingers, so we wash our hands. Oh, good, you're wearing your scissors. Okay, please over here. When we get dressed in the morning, right side is always first, because um, the right's um, stronger, and the right is, 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 represents goodness and kindness and, and, uh, and giving. And, uh, and, um, and the top always comes first. You always get dressed from the top first. So we actually, we start with our, with our yarmulke. See, even Levy, first thing on his head is his yarmulke. Across town, businesswoman Risa Klein is also starting her day. For a woman, there are rules about what you wear, too. All married women wear a wig called a scheitel. Because, while I have got a shaitel on, it's, um, it's just easier. Keeps my hair out the way, keeps everything out the way. But when I go to work, I won't have it on. But um, it's just to cover your hair in a wig. When you're married, it's meant to cover your hair in. They are quite expensive, and you can get some for thousands of pounds. But equally, you can buy a synthetic one for 50 pounds. I mean, this one was quite reasonable, this was about £800. It's to do with living hair being a very attractive part of your being. So you have to cover your hair. So only your husband gets to see your hair. That's two minutes, OK? Do some off the Right, see you later. Oh, Sam, we're doing a favour, just take those two boxes out. Yeah. First responsibility of the day for the men is to attend synagogue, the shul. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to Shul now. Yeah. Right. Let's go. We go to Shul every day. It's a wonderful thing. We're going to make a minion. The Shul here is uh, now a year and a half old. Um, beautiful new building. Well, 7.30. Why? Is, what time is it now? Oh. What day is today? It's Wednesday. So why? There we go, at the shore. Good morning. Good morning. Um, anybody who doesn't want to be on anybody who doesn't want to be on camera, please let me know. I don't. Okay. 
Rabbi Joffe covers his head with the prayer shawl. It's a commandment intended to help concentrate on praying. The men also strap on boxes, called tefillin, between their hands and eyes, to remind them that God rescued them from bondage in Egypt. The boxes containing scrolls are checked out regularly by a scribe. We have a commandment to wear tefillin every day. It's a commandment that we have to do. So we, if we, if you, it's as if you've not carried out that commandment. So you, you haven't done the will of God, which he wants us, what he wants us to do, and you learn no brownie points. <laughs> I'm going to recheck these now. The now first thing I do is check the bats in the boxes, make sure they're square. They've got to be perfectly square, up to a millimeter, we reckon. These ones are actually bang on. A millimetre out or rounded corners would be again invalid. A lot of the laws of, of the boxes of a tefillin are um, learnt from the in the, in the temple, temple times. The Mizbeach was the um, how was that? How was the, how was Mizbeach translated? Altar, I think. Um, it's where the sacrifices took place, and also if, it, that, if that had a dent in it or a piece of stone missing from it, it was invalid. And a lot of it is learnt. We learn that from, it also had to be squares. So a lot of it is learnt from here. Again, I, I can't give an explanation because it's one of the myths we don't really understand. We have to just it's myths that we just accept and do, without. How old? Are, how old are these rules? Would you say? Oh, this is back when the Torah was given. It's um, from you know, three thousand years ago. I'm just cutting through the stitches. Check out the tools. Right, this is the shell rush, the head one. So it's got four compartments inside and four sets of scrolls. So we're going to take them out. So number one. I'd like to take them out in order to make sure they're being put, put in order, because if they're not put in order, the right order they are, it's also invalid. So there's four compartments, there's four paragraphs. Beautifully written. The Ritsuas, the straps, also need checking. And here, this one's scratched here, it's a bit of it's been scuffed or something. Even a little crack like that could actually invalidate the whole tone. Is there a particular Routine or ritual for getting rid of one? If it's, did you just throw it in the bin? Oh no, can't be, can't. No, it has to be buried. Right, it has to be what's called called put in geniza. Not only that, but even all these bits which I'm, I've cut off here. This is the stitching that's come off. So because this has been used for, it's a very holy article. It's been used for a mitzvah. Even that, I can't throw in the bin. It has to be buried. So I've, I'll actually, I've got my my hoover here which I call it my Seamus Hoover, or my Geniza Hoover. So I hoover all the bits up, and the actual bag, the Hoover bag, will get buried. Well, is there any particular place you have to bury it, or does it just get buried in the garden, or...? It could be buried. I, it's, you're, you're actually asking the right person, because I'm... One of my, one of my sidelines is I'm in charge of the, the town's Seamus, which is the Geniza, like I mentioned. It just applies to all old prayer books from shuls and schools, even... Um, a lot of people put newspapers, which have got, uh, it might have Torah articles, um, holy articles in them, need burying. So um, I've just, very recently, in fact, just last week, I buried, I think it was just under, under seven tons, which is about a year's collection. So we had a huge, massive skip follow it. There's quite a picture of me somewhere but next to the skip. Where's it gone? Oh yeah. Mm. It was a huge. It was a huge hole. <laughs> it will never be you. That hole will be completely closed forever. These ancient rules and regulations can clash quite spectacularly with 21st century Britain. Orthodox Jews have to find a way of living in both worlds. Risa Klein's company sells DIY products. Saturday is one of their busiest days. But the law of Sabbath requires them to stop work on Friday afternoons and stay closed on Saturday. 
The way around it is to set up a separate company to trade during Sabbath. You have to draw up a contract. It has to have non-Jewish partners that it reverts over to. I think it started out in London. There was a guy who owned a chain of laundrettes, who obviously laundrettes, prime business is done over the weekend. So they had to explore this option of how a business that has a Jewish owner can trade on Shabbos. But then any proceeds are allocated to the company that is owned by the non-Jewish person. And there, there's all sorts of ways around it. But we don't take benefit out of it because we have made a choice to donate any of profits that that side makes to charity. I'll call you back later. Speak to you later. Bye. No problem. Just tell him it's um, Salman here. You know, it's just the... Uh... I've got children that need to be fed. Another business in town is about to get a visit. In Jewish law, giving to charity is an important commandment. <laughs> Rabbi Joffe runs a branch of a Jewish community organization that needs to raise money for its running costs. Hi. Oh, that's good. That's a good start. Anything else I forgot to do today? Do you know what you did last time? I think it was about a thousand or something. Last time you were a thousand, yeah. Pound, yeah. yeah. Okay. What are you doing? Are you want to do the same again? You want to up it? Well, I mean, <laughs> I, I was, I was, I have thought about it because, you know, although Shelley didn't mention anything when you rang me to say, you know, you're coming in and you want to talk business, yeah. you know. Um, yeah, I would like to give you a, a rise, um, 1500. Fantastic, beautiful. I mean, that was, that was, that was, that was the quickest, that was the quickest job I've ever done. I gauge my fundraising time at a thousand pound an hour. That's the way, uh, so, being that uh, we've got a budget at the moment of about seven grand a week, I've got to spend seven hours a week. What, what is the actual amount? Was it about 3,000, 2,000, 2,000 something? With a successful fundraising deal under his belt, it's back to the charity's HQ. Good morning. This is the store. Out, everything to fill in. Um, all types of books. People come here and shop. Here, challah boards. Here we are. All types of challah boards, Shabbat plates, challah plates, all types of talisim. See, all your talises here, talisim. All types of frames, Judaica, all types of kippot. Any colour you want. Would you like a pink kippah? All type. Here we are. All types of menorahs. Can you see? Here we go. Can you see all types of. Hanukkah, menorahs for, for, for Hanukkah. What do you think of this? How about that for a, a menorah? OK. Isn't that good? Wonderful. <laughs> Got it. Rabbi David Joffe works for a charity. Part of his role is to keep in touch with Orthodox Jews who might need some help. Meals. Meals on wheels. How about that? See, um, Morris is in a um, Morris is in an old age home. It's a beautiful place, but it's not kosher. And Morris keeps kosher. So um, when I go visit him, which is every uh, every every few weeks, I take with a. Um, a kosher meal. We've got sliced lamb. He likes sliced lamb. He likes lamb. Hi, Morris. Hello. How are you doing? Nice to see you. I bought you another. I bought you another lamb. Oh, thank you. Um, which is still frozen, but you need to, we need to get it into the freezer before it defrosts. So we'll leave that here. So yeah. before I go, we must remember to call the girl. Yeah. Got my trilling with me for you. Oh, thank you. As always. There you go. Now you look the part. Yeah. Let me do your hand bit. Boom. 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 No. A little older, mind you, but a but but the same. What's on? Yeah, same fella. 
At the Manchester Beth Din, Bernard Stone, the president of the synagogue, is preparing for afternoon prayers. I was born four days before VE v- Day, victory over Europe. Up to 30 years ago, I was self-employed. I used to go to auction sales and buy stuff with my grandfather. When mother, unfortunately, passed away, uh, and my aunt and an uncle, they couldn't look after themselves. So I was their carer for over 30 years. But uh, if mum was here today, she would say the same thing. We never regretted one minute of it. I've always been a sabbatula. We use these big lights on a Sabbath because the candles won't last. So it's to be like happy instead. Bingo. For the men, it's a mitzvah, a commandment, to attend synagogue three times a day. But for the women, the rules are different. In many of the synagogues, the women sit in a gallery. In this particular synagogue, the women are sitting on another side of a curtain. The idea is not, God forbid, to delineate and segregate between society and to make be judgmental. On the contrary, it is to the credit of the women that we feel that they are a distracting influence in prayer. <laughs> Men have got requirements to fulfil. They have to put filling on. They have to do. Um, they have to fulfil certain mitzvahs during the day, during the week, and those are governed by a time limit. Women are excluded from anything that is um, related to time, because the system understands when you've got children that you need to look after. You can't suddenly say, right, let's stop everything. I need to go and daven, or let's stop everything. I need to go and put filling on. As well as bringing up five children, Risa is a partner in a successful family business. Right, for the five, two, oh. As an Orthodox Jewish woman, this probably makes her an exception to the rule. I have friends who are religious with children, who are doctors, you know, women who are doctors, who are dentists, who are lawyers. So I'm not sure, I mean, I think in this day and age, maybe it's not as unusual as you see. It's certainly not the norm. I wouldn't say it is the majority of the female population go out and, and work in, I don't know whether you call it high profile jobs or whatever. No, it probably isn't the norm, but certainly it's not that unusual. No, no, I'm going to Vegas to the show. So, in the main, women are nurturers, they are carers, whereas men are not. Men are, I will go out and make the money to feed my family and not really designed to, to stay at home. That's not to say that men can't stay at home and look after their children, or that women can't go out to work. But if you're looking in very general terms, they are fundamentally different. We're going to get the kids. We're going to go home and do the whole uh, birthday thing. Signed shirt, including David Beckham. For, for, well, Benji's birthday, but it's like for all of them to share, for the boys to share, really. But it will go in Benji's room. Singers, that's the Man United room. What's this in here? Oh, you're, you shall see. Is it for Benji? Well, it's for everyone to share, but it's going in Benji's room. Okay, Is so it yeah. really signed? Yes, it really By the real people. By the real, real live Wicked. people, including Beckham. <gasps> wow, where did you get it from? Uh, Dad got it. Wow. Phil, so, okay. like what happened with this whole drawing thing? Are they... Looks you know, they had a draw. But they had a... On but Wednesday, what is that? Wrote yeah. <laughs> yeah. I told them I'd never do it, so I'm being honest about it. Wait, I'm just trying to get something. Occasionally, I take them to school. But, uh, 
No, generally not, in fairness. You know, well, I enjoy doing it sometimes. So like, usually I'm just like in the middle of stuff and it's, it means sort of going out in the middle of the day, which is just not practical for me most of the time. But seeing as it's Benji's birthday today, have you all said happy birthday to Benji? Happy birthday, Benji! Covering the makeup and covering the hair covering and stuff. Or look on the night table. Please don't touch me with your greasy hands. From when a girl is 12 and a boy is 13, they have their bar and bat mitzvah. So that is when they become officially an adult in, <clears throat> in the Jewish religion. Now, when a boy comes 13, he becomes a man, which means he is now responsible for all his deeds in, in, instead of his parents. And the same for a girl. The laws about boys and girls not touching each other. For example, you know, I might have a childhood friend that we always used to play together and fight together. Um, once a girl reaches the age of 12, she or a boy the age of 13, they really shouldn't have any contact with anybody physically. It is hard. There is, There are times when you meet men and they put out their hands and say, pleased to meet you. Um, and it's difficult. It is difficult. You don't, you don't want to embarrass anybody. Um, so you try and explain to them, oh, you know, we don't shake men's hands. And as far as, you know, getting change in, sh in shops, you know, you try not to, not, not to touch anybody. I mean, obviously, just from them putting change in your hand, nothing major is going to happen, but we are not supposed to touch one another. So either you hold your hands a little lower and they drop the change in or they put it on the counter. Um, people that know will do that for you and they will put it down or try not to touch you. People that don't know, um, you know, will drop it in your hand and they don't know and it's not their fault and, you know, it's difficult to get around these situations. Yeah, there's nothing you can do. But when you when you are in control and there is something you can do to prevent it happening, you should make sure that you do. Is our man? The woman is so respected and so revered. I mean, the Jewish the Jewish mother the, is, 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 is 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 the is the queen of the Jewish home. To some non-Jews, the closeness of large Jewish families can seem a hugely attractive reason to convert. Frequently, the social warmth of the Jewish community, being small and caring and look after each other, attracts them. Not the theological part of it, but it's a feeling, here we are, I'm lonely, I feel neglected either by my family or by my community. Why not embrace, just join a new club, if you like, warm, um, caring, it's got, it's, it's got some self-purpose, it's got some motivation, it's lovely. But, that's not what we are looking for, and that's not the reason for conversion. The Beth Din provides guidance to people who want to convert to Judaism, but it's a rigorous process which can take years, and very few make it to the end. Wanting to be Jewish has been yeah. in your mind for a long, 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 long time. Yeah. Yeah. You told me, I told you it would be a good idea if you could go and visit one of the local synagogues. Yeah. So I really want to hear from you today, to start with at least, how you found it in the synagogue, what it, what it oh, did for you. Smashing. It made me feel mean? a lot better. Did you yeah. find some sort of spiritual inspiration oh, there? Did yeah. you feel you were yeah. close to God? Yeah. You felt your soul was where it belongs? Well, I've searched all my life and I've been involved in every religion. There isn't one I haven't been involved in. Right. And uh, th this is all the way through I've wanted this. Yes, but I, I, I've tried the others out because people have put me off. I've got Jewish friends who right. said it's very difficult. Try the other religions, you'll be all right. But. No, Some people right, yeah. may well find learning about Judaism very interesting, but yeah. the application, getting up on a cold, wintry morning, as I did this morning, at half past six to go to yeah. the synagogue yeah. and fighting the ice and the snow, yeah. right? Whereas other people may feel like they want to turn over and yeah. uh, another half an yeah. hour in bed. That's what being an Orthodox Jew is all yeah. about, right? And that's not a minor thing, that's the least yeah. of the challenges. Continuing his charitable work, Rabbi Joffe is going to visit a man in mourning. Henry Corbett. Henry Coleman is is um, is sitting shiva, which means for the week, uh, his sister died. Um, is his sister, wasn't it? Sister. His sister died. Uh, when was it? Uh, Monday. Monday night. Monday, and so for the week after, um, a, a close relative dies, like a husband or a wife or sister or a brother or a mother or a child, um, we stay at home, and we sit on special low chairs. Um, and people come and visit us, and we we are in mourning for that person. And it's not just mourn as long as you want. It's a mandated seven-day mourning period. Um, and we're going to get Henry. 
Henry, is, is a, his sister w uh, passed away in, in America and he's, he's sitting in the his mandated mourning period here in Manchester. Um, in the Shiver House all, all mirrors are covered and the television covered for the same reason that we shouldn't see reflections and mirrors and we don't use the during the year of mourning there's no music, uh, we don't go to, to, to big, to, to, to all types of Concerts. celebrations. See, the flame of the candle represent, represents the soul of the person that's departed. Um, a lot of people have this burning for the week of Shiva. Some people even have the custom to, to burn the whole year um, to have one, which is... Uh, uh, I've got a lot of positive feedback for people who've done that. Because it means for a year you've got to focus. Rabbi Joffe is now going to perform a ritual called Keria that goes back to the Bible. When Jacob heard of Joseph's death, he reacted by tearing his own clothes. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start the cut and then you rip. Okay, so won't it hold this with your two hands? Like schlep, like as if you're going to cut. Repeat it after me. Baruch. Baruch. Atta. Atta. Adonai. Adonai. Dayan. Baruch. Baruch. Dayan. Dayan. Ha Emes. Ha Emes. Good. Alright. Okay. Yeah, okay. It's, it can be a traumatic moment when you when you when you do the career. Because it's a, it's a it's an actual physical action connected with what happens. Well when you do when you pull it Reaction. That's right. That's right. Should I have some I saw in the kitchen your dummy and your sippy cup. It's early evening and the Joffe family are preparing for a very special party. My son, Schneer Zalman, we don't cut the boys here until they're three, right? Because just like um, man is compared to a tree, we're commanded not to touch the fruit of the tree until the third year. You're not allowed to touch the fruits of the tree. So just like man is compared to a seed, a seed is planted <clears throat> and you water it and it bears fruit, so too a baby, you nurture it and it grows. <clears throat> So just like we don't touch the, the fruit from a tree, we don't touch a baby boy's hair until he's three. And then when he's three, you cut his hair, leaving the payas, the side locks. And from that age, he starts wearing a yarmulke and tzitzis. And it's customary for everybody to give him a penny and they, he puts it in the charity box and they cut a snip of hair. We'll put up the, Leela, do you mind putting up the kettle, Leela, please? Please put the kettle up. He's only three, he has his first haircut. I meant to act a bit more mature when the three, but he's not. No, but you know, my, my decorating is, you know, I'm improving. I used to just plonk it. Yankee! Hurry up, I need you now! Please dress him. Give him to her, let him crawl around, and then please come down, I need you. What, we're gonna sell a stapler from the office? Yes, it's all here. Nizelma, you want to get dressed now? It's going to be your upshare-ish. You want one? Okay, you could have one. Okay, take one. Okay, I'm going to dress this kid, and then I better dress myself, because it's getting late. Bernard Stone is planning a big party, too. It's for elderly people in a local community centre, and he's on his way to set it up. At the corner here used to be the post office here, and then at the corner used to be Dasha, the barber. All Jewish people, either sides, all gone, all gone. How many tablets a day I take? 33. 33 tablets a day. If you shake me, a rackle. If I didn't have the synagogue, I don't know what I would do, because the synagogue is my life. Straight out. I've been doing that kind of work 
is the middle sixties. Come out the when way, watch, when watch the Shabbos on. kettle. Watch the Shabbos kettle. <laughs> oh, I, I forgot we've got chopped herring. Chopped herring. The last day we had eggs, they were lovely. This is like rubber. Shall I cut them up for you? Uh, no, it's not happening. Uh, my congregation is mainly elderly people. Um, we have people well over 90, you'll be seeing coming. And uh, the youngest is myself, and I'm nearly 60, so I've got so many girlfriends, and they're all over 80. Just see if there's a bucket there. Yeah. I'll tell you what to do. Put, put We're not there. kicking the bucket. Joe, give me the We got in trouble once with our rabbi. He, Hello there, David. The boys here is performing. And they fetched a beautiful lady singer. And our rabbi refused to have her to entertain. It's only men can entertain. Women so count. So yeah. Yeah, well. I don't know. I don't know. If he would let someone dress him, I can go get dressed, but he's not letting. I need a brush. Gilly, go upstairs and ask Mosi to give you a brush or find one somewhere. Look in the girls' room. I need a brush for his ears. <laughs> Rabbi Jaffe's Hi, mom. Hey, Leah. Hi, how are you doing? How are you, Sam? You look amazing. Hey, you're so skinny. Thank God. This is my cousin. And five years ago, in May, we never thought he'd be here today. He had how many heart bypass? Three heart attacks and an emergency five-way bypass. They rushed me straight into the hospital the next day after the third heart attack. And I was, I was, I was out. They kept me sedated for a week. And when he phoned me up, you know, he had shoes down his throat. He's never been conscious for over ten days. And... Uh, he spoke to me on the phone and I couldn't understand what he, who he was. And then I realised it was him. We both burst out crying with it. Yeah. Now, thank God I feel all right. So I'll come here and help Bernard. Right on, man. Excuse me, Bernard. And we're going to start and we're we'll going to start by asking my father to come in and snip the first snip. Um, he's going to start the first snip um, over here. There we go. Um, it's customary to give the child some charity um, or a coin to put in the charity box, um, thereby, of course, teaching him right away that it's a mitzvah and a wonderful thing to give stocker. My children, for the first five years of their life, thought that any money was stocker. <laughs> okay, wonderful. Mazel tov. Still can't find the potato corn. We're not in your way here, are we? Yeah. No. When are you going to get these in, Bernard? Uh, well, there's two things. It only takes five minutes to do. It only takes five minutes. Well, two more, and that's another one of them, that should do. Yeah, see ya, see ya. But I still can't find the potato cuddle. Who stole the potato cuddle? Search everybody. I left a, I left a box on there. You haven't seen it, have you? Potato cuddle. Potato cuddle. I showed you, I showed you. I showed you. I showed you. I'm upstairs. Is, is that it there, Eddie? Yeah, that's it. Is that it? That's it. We found the potato cuddle. Thank you. Pleasure. It's in here, so when you go, you'll look for it. And my mother's not even here. I'm going to have to get this haircut. Okay. Uh, mother, where are you? Thank you so much. I didn't mean you should catch them. Sorry, they made them. They're heavy. There won't be anything left to. He's got no hair. Ah, Mrs. Abelson. Mr. Abelson, how are you? It's so lovely. Ah. It's so lovely to see you. We've not seen this gentleman for quite a long time. It's the rabbi's father. Come on. It's so lovely to see you. <laughs> Come on. She's going downstairs for a cigarette. Don't tell everybody. Shut up, you. It's just a smoke. Why not? 
You grow smaller. Shh. Quiet now, please. Give him a blessing. Come on, put your hand on his head. The Cohen, the Cohen's going to give him a blessing. Amen. Descendants of the priests of the ancient temple, members of the Cohen family, are venerated by Orthodox Jews and are often asked to perform the blessing on special occasions. Amen. Thank you, Cohen. I love the way you hear it. Turn around. I love it. It's just that she's in the third Another one with Dr. Summer. Yeah. Give it the back table. Yeah, give it all you want. La, 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 la. If you're not eating, clap. I'm finish your food. Oh, oh. Show me. Can you put it in for me, please? How Thank are you? Thank God. Dobby looks so different. I know. I had a bit big lot left over, a, a, a load of um, right. working your way over. Okay. We're going to bench now. Rabbi Leader, Rabbi Lever will lead us. <laughs> Enjoy it. It's the morning after the party, and Rabbi Joffe takes his son to school. The father brings the child in to the school, and the teacher initiates the child into the into the learning of Torah. Here we go. We bring him into the school. All back up in the talus. Okay. Mazel Tava, Mazel Tava, Mazel the new Schneer's Almond. Schneer's Almond, Schneer's Almond is going to read the Aleph base from the front page here of the Tanya. All the letters are mixed up and we're going to find them on this page. Okay? Everyone, Aleph. Aleph. Dalad. Dalad. Hey. Shin. Shin. Sin. Learning the letters of the Hebrew alphabet at the age of three is the beginning of a lifelong study of the Jewish Bible, the Torah. Hashem is here, Hashem is there, Hashem is truly everywhere. Up, up, down, down, right, left and all around. Here, there and everywhere, that's where he can be found. Up, up, down, down, right, left and all around. Here, there and everywhere, that's where he can be found. It's time for the festival of Purim, and Rabbi Joffe is at a Jewish school packing boxes for charity. Somebody's trying to get music instead of noise. It's supposed to be music. At Purim, as with other Jewish festivals, there are special commandments called mitzvahs. Well, should we wait till the noise goes off, and then I'll tell you. What we do um, is we take this. And we give this out, okay, there'll be three and a half, four thousand of these given out to the community uh, for people to give to their friends, okay, so that they can all perform the mitzvah on Purim. This I did a card explaining all the mitzvahs of Purim, what to do. Uh, we've got here the four, the four mitzvahs of Purim, uh, to hear the Megillah, relive the story of Purim, 
um, send gifts of food, Mishlav Manot, give gifts to the needy, to poor people, uh, on, on, it's a special mitzvah to find a poor person and give them uh, money on, on, on Purim, and to eat a festive meal. In fact, on Purim is the only day of the year where it's a mitzvah to get drunk. A special service in the synagogue on the eve of Purim is the start of the festival. Purim celebrates the complete reversal of being on the, on the verge of a complete annihilation to complete opposite victory. The Jews in the times of, 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 of Haman and the story of, of Megillah were going to be completely annihilated in one day. And that was Haman, Haman's goal. When we read the Megillah, and it comes to every time Haman's name is mentioned, the custom is to blot out his name. Okay, so every time his name is mentioned, we boo and we stamp our feet and we make lots of noise to blot out and to show that we are completely blotting out his name. <laughs> On the eve of Purim, the normal rules of behavior are relaxed. At the home of Rabbi Joffe's sister Leah and her husband Max, the celebrations have just begun. Allowed guns or anything like that, so they go mad on Purim. Everything, guns cutting their hair like this, <laughs> anything that they're not allowed to do, they think they can do it on Purim. Well, they can, can't they? Within reason. Drink. Smoke. Smoke, yes! Not really. So please give generously. I do not. They were raising money for a school for special needs children. The, the, the idea on Purim is that we say that anyone, anyone who puts out the hand on Purim that we should give them something. Yeah. We don't we don't refuse That's anyone. No one's turned away. Out in the street, kids in fancy dress are also doing their bit to raise money for charity by ambushing passing cars and asking for donations. <laughs> The next day, Burim starts for real with all kinds of festivities. The previous night's carnival atmosphere continues. <laughs> the Joffies are at a kids' fancy dress party for their local community. Look at those gloves. What are you? 
We have a Queen Esther here. Isn't she beautiful? Fantastic. Okay, and who's this? Action! About 50 days in a year, we have festivals like this. And every single week, we all sit around the table. Shabbat. A large family meal is the climax to Purim. Followed by some serious drinking. Mm. When you can't know the difference you say, between saying bless Mordechai and curse, curse Haman, that's when you've drunk the required amount. <laughs> we do it only because we have to. We have to have another one. Max, you have to. During this evening of partying, there are amateur money raising performances going on all the time. Here we go. The event is being repeated in hundreds of households around the neighborhood. Above all, the importance of family is at the heart of Jewish law. In all respects. A bond that makes the Orthodox Jewish identity so strong. Is he finished introducing everybody? <laughs> it's events like Sabbath, circumcision, Passover, and keeping kosher that bind the Jewish Orthodox community together. But Purim is perhaps the festival that best sums up the optimism of their faith in the future. The theme of Purim, it's a, it's a spiritual topsy-turvy day. And the way we celebrate it in the utmost is by, by going beyond our own uh, limits, by, beyond our own understanding. That means that sometimes even our own uh, logic and rationale can get in the way. Sometimes such fantastic things happen in the world that no one can imagine in the wildest dream that such a thing can happen. You think it's a dream, you pinch yourself. It can't be real, it's unreal. You know, they woke up Sunday morning and Saddam Hussein was captured. People couldn't believe that it's true. They woke up one morning and the Berlin Wall fell. When it happened, it was a dream, it wasn't real. It's, you know, it's, it's too far-fetched, it's too fantastic for such a thing to happen. And what happens in front of your eyes is just unbelievable. Purim is such a day.